Hello everyone and the following is a disclaimer. This top five list of graphic novels is merely an opinion piece. It is not the top five list of graphic novels ever, but merely a top five list of graphic novels that I have read and loved and that I believe you should read and love. If you disagree, fine. If not, then go ahead and buy these books and support the amazing writers and artists who make them. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Food, a top five list of graphic novels that you should read. What's going to be interesting about this list is that one, it does not contain superheroes and two, the following graphic novels are not from DC or Marvel Comics. So let's get right to it, shall we? Now, you'll notice that a couple of these books are books that I've reviewed already. And that's because they're so nice, I have to include them twice. And that starts off with number five, The Many Adventures of Miranda Mercury. If you're any kind of fan of old school science fiction like Flash Gordon, then you will appreciate The Many Adventures of Miranda Mercury. Miranda Mercury, along with her partner, boy genius Jack Warning, go throughout the known galaxy, kicking ass, taking names, defeating bad guys, and saving the day. This has really colorful artwork by Lee Ferguson, a really intense dramatic subplot that follows throughout all the many stories of the volume, and unfortunately, it leaves off on a cliffhanger, which is also why I include this on the list. Hopefully, if enough people pick up this book, the writer and artist will finish a volume two and release it. We have to find out what happens to Moran the Mercury next. So go on out and get this book now. you be glad you did. Coming in at number four is Greg Rucka's and Michael Lark's Lazarus. Just to give you a good idea about what this book is all about, I'm going to read off the back. The world now lies divided not amongst political or geographical boundaries, but amongst financial ones. Wealth is power, and that power rests now with only a handful of families. The few who provide a service for the ruling family are cared for. All others are waste. In each family, there is one person given the best they can offer, training and technology and assets, every scientific advantage. This person is named their family sword and shield, their protector, their Lazarus. In the family Carlisle, the Lazarus is called forever. This is the beginning of her story. Outside of the blurb that I just read off the back, it's really very hard to sum up this book in a few choice words. Outside of excellent, well done, compelling, intense. This is many different things wrapped up in one very pretty bowl with artwork by Michael Larks. It's a political thriller. It's a future dystopian. It's about the machinations, the political machinations, not only between families for power, but within families for power. Of course, we have the lead character, Forever, who is a buff, six foot and plus enforcer, who is given the best of her family, such as intense training, as well as a powerful healing factor, a la Wolverine or Deadpool. Greg Rucka once more knocks it out of the park in bringing us to and bringing to us a deep, complex, multi-layered female protagonist. And I honestly wish that there were more writers like him that were given the chance to bring these stories to life the way that he does. Michael Lark's artwork is really. Well, it honestly reminds me of the artwork done on Gotham Central. It's more realistic, but I wouldn't go so far as to call it dark and gritty. So, again, buy this book. I want to find out what happens next in Volume 2. Because the, with the way that Volume 1 left off on, oh man, it's going to be good. Also... I should add, if you're a fan of the Game of Thrones series, you're going to like this. I mean, come on. This is basically about royal families duking it out with each other, as well as other royal families. 
Coming in at number three is Archie's pal Kevin Keller, The Collected Works, written and drawn by Dan Parent. Frankly, as of late, RG Comics has just been knocking it out of the park with some really nice quality storytelling based around their characters, both new and old. We've got not only Kevin Keller, who is a gay teenager who moves to Riverdale with his family, but we've also have other series such as Life with Archie, After Life with Archie. We've also had, well, Archie, a rock and roll romance, as well as the series before this wherein he meets and falls in love with Valerie of Josie and the Pussycats. It's like you just can't seem to go wrong in picking an Archie comic these days. Now this collected volume is all about the introduction of Kevin Keller into Riverdale, wherein we find out many different things about the guy. For example, he likes political science. His uh, dad is a retired colonel. He was an army brat when he was growing up. He eats almost as much as Jughead, and he becomes good friends with Archie and all the regular crew, especially Veronica. It's just such a nice warm-hearted and at times quite touching story about you know a gay teenager living in what many believe to be just a regular slice of Americana. In short, you just can't go wrong in buying anything that has Archie Comics and Dan Parent on the cover. Coming in at number two is the wonderfully fun and awesome Lumberjanes, which is written by Noelle Stevenson and Grace Ellis, with artwork by Brooke Allen. This is the Calgary Expo variant cover, which I was very happy to have picked up once I found her booth. I had bought the comic on Comixology, and I liked it so much that, well, I had to pick up some hard copies as well. To describe Lumberjanes is basically about a group of six friends who attend the Lumberjanes camp for hardcore lady types. Friendship to the max! There, they encounter a bunch of supernatural going-ons, which they have to figure out what is going on, usually by punching it. This is just a fun, oages comic that you know anyone can read and enjoy. And what I especially like about it is that, as you can see here on the cover, the group is, well, all women, and they're all different kinds of women. We got a couple women of color in here. We got a couple white women. They're all different sizes and shapes. They all dress differently, and it just looks to be a lot of fun. You know, if you really liked Buffy, you're, you're going to like this book as well. So, again, pick this comic up and support it. Also, one thing I should note is that when you do buy any comics through Comixology, make sure to buy it through the website. I don't know why, but whenever you buy it through the app, you know, the writers and creators and artists don't get the money that they should. They only get some of it. When you buy it through the website, well, they get, well, most of the money. I assume Comixology takes out some money for hosting the comic and all that sort of thing. So be sure to buy this comic you know, either in hard copy or through the Comixology website. And coming in at number one, which I don't think is a surprise to anyone that knows what I've been reading lately, The Rat Queens, specifically Volume 1, Sass and Sorcery. Curtis J. Webb and Rock Up Church just bring a great, fantastic comic. One of the best one of the most fun that I've read in the past couple decades, really. I cannot get over just how good this comic is. It's loads of fun. It's got tons of heart. It's got really good diversity, uh, wonderful artwork, and all different kinds of body types and people and just, oh, man. You know, if you're really sick of, you know, nothing but... A bunch of plain white people running around in, you know, The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings. You know, you can check this out and it's, you're, you're not going to be disappointed. It's just, the comedy is great. It really has heart and packs the biggest punch when it shows it. 
and jeez. Oh, and already the next issue that came out after this volume is just ramping up to what's probably going to be a, another really great storyline. Uh, uh, you have to buy this. You know, you get the single issues. You get the trade paperbacks. You know, you go to the website and, and buy the merchandise. Uh, they they have only merchandise for women, but I'm sure they did say that there's going to be some for men. And I actually kind of like it that they made merchandise first for women because more often than not in graphic novels, it, it, it still seems to be this old boys network clubhouse mentality that just, you know, it goes and directs his attention towards men first. So it's, it's really quite nice to see, you know, a, a comic and the people behind it that are thinking of women first. Uh, I know they're not the only ones that, you know, think of women first, but I, I, it's just, it's always good to see. So, again, buy Rat Queens. Thus ends my top five list of graphic novels that you should check out. If you've read any of them, tell me what you think about it. And if you have your own suggestions, then please feel free to leave them in the comments for this video or contact me on my website or through my Facebook account. I'm Triple J and that's all I got left to say. Take care.